Hello again, this guide is about Lightning Strike Warden. Lightning Strike is a strike attack that can be performed with a melee weapon to fire lightning projectiles. You will use it here with a claw that has a lot of added elemental damage of all types. It synergizes well with the new Warden Ascendancy. Claws and daggers let you use Nightblade support for a major bonus to crit chance and multiplier. Critical Strike will inflict elemental ailments to benefit from Warden's Avatar of the Wilds, which grants much more damage. It's more effective if you're able to deal all types of elemental damage. This setup also allows you to benefit from Trinity support for even more damage. The build fosters a perfect condition for Unbound Avatar with its high hit rate and all three types of elemental ailments it inflicts with each hit. It's a skill that you'll have to use during boss fights. We have also specialized in tinctures. Enduring Suffusion will make your tinctures linger for 6 seconds. They will always be active for 12 seconds, so with a reduced cooldown prefix on them, they'll be up permanently. Sustaining Mana Burn is easy with Mana on Hit and Instant Mana Leech. Lightning Strike is a basic strike skill that releases projectiles on hit. These projectiles will deal the bulk of the damage. You should also strive for a 100% crit chance to benefit from crit multiplier from Nightblade, but that's easy. It is a melee skill but has a huge range and doesn't feel like one. It's a life-based build with a high evasion rating. It's possible to achieve 4 or 5k of maximum life, up to 50k of evasion rating, 100% spell suppression chance, and have the powerful elusive buff. You can still die easily to attacks that are not evaded, and spells that are too powerful even when suppressed. Clear speed is good. The projectiles pierce and you have the extra targeting from gloves and attack mastery. Single target damage is very high. Just remember to activate your avatar skill, tinctures, vial haste, and hydrosphere. It's a league starter, but to deal meaningful damage, you have to have a good claw, which can be expensive. Our claw had only tier two and three added elemental damage prefixes and no runes. If you're using Inder's Stand, seek a body armor with mixed armor and evasion to get up to 3000 ward, maybe even more. This rope requires an exceptionally high evasion rating. You want to have two taming rings, they're just too good even on a high budget. Overall, you don't need any unique items. The Celestial Brace. There is no evasion on these gloves, so you won't be able to get 15% suppression from the evasion mastery, but if you can reach 100% without it, Consider these gloves for a lot of attack speed and fortify on hit. Inda's stand belt is good if you don't get hit often, or if you dodge, avoid, or block almost every attack. Combine it with a body armor that has a lot of armor, evasion, or both, and maybe spore bloom tincture to blind enemies. Two taming rings are your best options. It's a lot of elemental damage and elemental resistances. Lethal Pride is used mainly for Strength, which it grants a lot of if socketed near Fervor Notable. Some of the Notable upgrades can be fitting too, like the 4% increased maximum life. The auras you're using are Grace, Wrath, Precision, and Veil Haste. On a Watcher's Eye, look for Attack Speed or Attack Damage from Precision, and any defensive mods from Grace. Your main defensive layers are Maximum Life, Evasion, and Spell Suppression. Try to have them high and capped, with your elemental resistances at 75% too. Chaos resistance should be at least positive. Your damage comes from a claw and other minor sources of added damage. You will also need all attributes for skill gems and armor pieces with high defensive stats. Remember to get enough accuracy and crit chance. Try to gain a lot of evasion, maximum life, resistances, and spell suppression chance on a helmet. For the Eldritch mods, look for reduced mana cost of attacks, and mana reservation efficiency. Get the most basic life, resistance, and evasion on a body armor. Spell suppression and dexterity will be good too. For the Eldritch mods, you should go for the Grace Aura effect and the Non-Curse Aura effect. Get a claw, preferably the Imperial Claw for a lot of life on hit, with as much added cold, lightning, and fire damage as you can afford. For suffixes, get attack speed and crit chance. Shield. Here get evasion, maximum life, and spell suppression, resistances, or attack speed, whatever you need the most. Rare gloves can be a source of life, resistances, suppression, dexterity, and a few rare or crafted offensive mods for increased damage, attack speed, or accuracy. For the Eldritch mods, look for extra targeting for strike skills or rage on hit, and spell suppression chance 
or additional pierce. Maximum life and movement speed are a must-have on boots. Resistances, suppression, and evasion should be here too. For the Eldritch mods, seek chaos resistance and increased elusive effect. A belt should have strength, resistances, maximum life, and increased elemental damage with attacks. Amulet. What you shall be interested in, besides the obvious defensive and life mods, are crit chance, attributes, and gem level for lightning skills. On your jewels, look for affixes with maximum life, elemental resistances, attributes, or added elemental damage with claws. Abyss jewels are valued more than the regular ones since they add flat values instead of increasing your existing ones. Use life flask with bleed removal, jade flask with increased evasion, and silver flask with increased movement speed. For tinctures, definitely get the prismatic tincture and a rose thorn tincture if you cannot cap your crit chance, spore bloom tincture for much better defenses via blind on hit, or oak branch tincture if you haven't anointed veteran's wrath for rage on hit, or you don't have it on gloves as exarch's mod. Their suffixes should give you attack speed and elemental penetration. You can only pick two tinctures. Lightning Strike is the attack you're using. It's a strike skill that creates projectiles, which is its main damaging component. It's called Lightning Strike, but it deals whatever the type of damage you have on your weapon. Link it to a Nightblade, Trinity, Multi-Strike, Inspiration, and returning projectiles support gems. Evasion is the main defensive layer. Use Grace to be more likely to avoid attacks. Wrath adds lightning damage to attacks. Herald of Ice adds flat cold damage to your attacks and shatters frozen enemies increasing your clear speed. With Enlightened Support they reserve less mana. It should not be needed, but having more unreserved mana is recommended. By wielding a claw, you're allowed to use Whirling Blades, one of the best movement abilities. Link it to faster attacks and life tap support gems to move faster and waste no mana on it. Steelskin forms a protective barrier that absorbs some of the incoming hit damage for some time and stops bleeding. Link it to cast when damage taken and life tap support gems. Assassin's Mark increases your critical strike chance and its multiplier and recovers your life and mana on kill. Link it to mark on hit to trigger it on hit against tough enemies and life tap. Precision increases your accuracy rating and critical strike chance. Keep it at a low level to save mana if you don't need either of its bonuses anymore. Link it with Arrogance to make it reserve life instead of mana. Blood Rage increases attack speed and grants frenzy charges on kill. It slowly drains your life, so turn it off if you don't leech at the moment. Hydrosphere applies cold and lightning exposure on nearby enemies which lowers their resistances. Your projectiles can interact with it. Vile Haste might be used periodically for more movement and attack speed. Kill all the bandits or help Kraten if you value 8% movement speed over the passive skill point. Soul of the Brine King is the best choice for a major god. It grants stun immunity after being stunned and frees immunity. For a minor god, you should choose Aberath if you're afraid of burning grounds, or Garakhan to reduce the effect of shock on you and for blind and maim immunity. On the passive skill tree, pick elemental damage, claw damage, maximum life, evasion, spell suppression, tincture effect, critical strike chance, accuracy, leech, reservation efficiency, and effect of marks nodes. Cornered Prey with its mastery for 80%, increased crit chance against bleeding enemies, is a good investment. The two tincture masteries for the first six stacks of mana burn to have no effect, and turning them off after 12 seconds are very important. From the shadows is a dagger notable, which you're not using, but allocating it for the elusive effect and the mastery for Nightblade crit multiplier is worth it. Piercing shot is important too. It causes your projectiles to pierce two targets. You should also get the elemental mastery for a 25% chance to treat enemies resistances as inverted. Mark mastery for frenzy charges, mana mastery for reservation efficiency, claw mastery for elusive effect, attack mastery for extra strike targeting, evasion mastery for either spell suppression or increased evasion from body armor, Leech Mastery for Instant Leech, and Accuracy Mastery for Flat Accuracy. That is all there is to it. Like the video and subscribe to the channel. See you in the next one.